Greetings, Dustin here again, vloggers, vloggers, and followers. Another great week here. Um, I do want to talk about, you know, reaching out for support. Um, you know, I had a hard time accepting that. Um, it took 35 years, um, and maybe the coronavirus, I don't know, not having it necessarily, but just having to be restricted and, you know, not being able to do the things and being able to be as wild as I was when I was off my medicine, um, while I was not medicating properly, correct, if I correct right. But, um, you know, just having to realize that, you know, it's okay. Uh, sometimes you have to reach out and talk to someone and, you know, that's okay. You know, and I think really another piece of that is realizing that, you know, it, it doesn't always have to be the ones that we've laid on a crutch for, for 20 years or more. Um, it doesn't always have to be family either. Um, they're safe, you know, there's many safe spaces out there, um, that respect your privacy. Um, they talk to you and they share with you, uh, the, you know, and you share like-minded things. Um, for this week, I've been going to NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental, on Mental Illness. Um, you find them out on the web at www.nami.org. Um, they're in the United States. There's several thousand affiliates and, you know, several, there's different affiliates and there's different chapters. Um, at least every county should have a NAMI. Some join with other counties. Some don't have any that are active. Um, my county, I'm actually in my employ and my employer has sponsors a NAMI, but right now we only have a NAMI for families and, um, you know, but we do have a NAMI connections. Uh, that's the peer support one. Uh, that's for anybody who has a mental health diagnosis. I want to mention, um, and just self diagnosis or, or just admits they have, a, you know, have some sort of acknowledge that they have some sort of mental health, um, need. Um, you know, just, it's not a crisis group. It's not, you know, it's not a crisis or, you know, therapeutic, but just to reach out, I think is just speaks volumes. And, you know, um, I'm working, I'm online, you know, one thing that the coronavirus has taught me is that it's okay. And one thing I'm thankful for is the ability to have, uh, those resources available to me, especially, with a uh, zoom and having my camera here and my, you know, my online, my camera on my computer, but you can have a phone or anything. Um, I think, you know, that's the key, um, you know, having support, you know, and I'm thankful to the two affiliates that I work with out in the Eastern part of my state on the other side, you know, um, I'm, I'm here in my living room, but I'm, you know, having a support group with up to eight, up to 17 other individuals in another part of the state. And, you know, that just, it helps. It, it's just, you know, it, um, it just, it just, you, you, you fix, you feel like you're not alone. And that's our key takeaway that you are not alone. And, you know, that's what I need. I just, it's not just with the autism, it's the things that come inside, like the, you know, the, the anxiety, the bipolar, um, the OCD that I have, you know, just things that, you know, need worked on that necessarily, um, do not, uh, Cohen's the neuro, not just specific to autism, but, uh, everybody suffers, you know, everybody has a need and, um, you know, I recommend that anybody who isn't, you know, um, you know, is, is looking for support, just go to NAMI.org and, um, they will find, you'll find resources. I heard of other groups, um, across the nation, New York has a lot of big presence, but, you know, just, you know, um, it's, you know, support is needed now. Peer support in that realm is needed more than ever now in 2020, especially with the coronavirus and the second rain, re, re, second wave of the coronavirus. Um, it's just, it's, it's just not good. And, you know, I really need that because, and I'm going to close with this a little bit, but you know, for the first time in 35 years, my grown, my, I'm now grown adult. In 35 years, I decided not to go home for Thanksgiving. Now I've lived with my family for most of my life. Um, I was in school year. I was in uh, residential placement for a year. Um, I lived at my other place for two years before moving here. 
Um, I was very, um, you know, I was I, I, I always went home for Thanksgiving, no matter what. Sometimes when I was living on my own, I helped with food. Um, you know, just it's just going to be sad. Um, but I have to do it to respect, you know, I'm, I don't want to have a, like a, like a chain, like a, you know, we talk when coronavirus about having the chain of spreaders. And I know that it's a small group of people, but it's just, it's just scary because you don't know where those people go. And, you know, I just, I just don't think it's a good idea. Um, I feel like I have, you know, where I go now, I have proper contact, I have proper tracing, proper scans, things like that. Um, that I feel it, you know, I feel, you know, it's comfortable. And, you know, most of my family, majority, my family is understanding of it. Um, you know, just of, you know, not link. I just don't feel it like comfortable going for a long period of time. And, you know, being around people close, that close for a long period of time. Um, you know, it's just a struggle. But I think many people are going to have that struggle this year. Um, people younger than I, some around my age, maybe not. I'm a little older, but you know, I think everybody has struggles at Thanksgiving and holidays, especially with grief too. So I think, you know, for the first time, I'm not going to have somebody with me at Thanksgiving. I mean, I'll probably have somebody drop off some food or something, but, and I do have the local ministeriums bringing me food on for the lunch, but you know, nothing, it's not going to be kind of the same. You know, I did go to the Thanksgiving dinner for the community last couple of years, but it's just not, it's not the same this year. And I think that's the thing with the whole world, and that's the theme this week for me is, you know, 2020 has been hell for me, and it's been, but I'm recouping from it, and I'm doing better, um, you know. Uh, you know, I wish I could say it was easy. I wish I'd say I could see the green light at the end of the tunnel, but nobody can. We have, I mean, I'm not going to get political, but we have a, we have possible, a potential of a new president, probably a very probable, uh, new president taking office. So things are changing there, you know, they just got, and there's other changes that, you know, are related to coronavirus. I'm not, so it's just, it's just a realm of changes and it makes me anxious. So, um, you know, just, just struggling a little bit, but you know, again, you know, with the help of that, that support group and other support groups and other mental health supports and day programs and going to work and family all that and my nice healthy blend is making it work well for me so with that i want to tell you if i don't vlog again before thanksgiving um i'm gonna tell in my community happy thanksgiving um you know like i said it's not gonna be the same and for the first time uh in 35 years i'm not gonna have a big gathering Last year was the first year we went at night. We had dinner at five o'clock at night. And this year is just not going to be me. So, you know, um, you know, it's my choice and I have to accept it. And my family has accepted it. And, you know, it's just how it's going to be. So with that, I thank you as always. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Dustin's Dynasty. And always stay safe, stay warm, stay strong.